Hey, this is Matt. Once again, welcome back to another video. This is a paid request this time for Lucas, and it's for the film called Mega Mind. Now, for those interested in requesting pretty much any type of videos or topics, randomness, out of the blueness, whatever it may be, uh, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or through my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. And Make Your Mind's a film I had reviewed a while ago, but Sally got snagged with copyright. But Lucas was nice stuff to request it again, and I wanted to talk about it again because it's an underrated movie. It's a good animated film from DreamWorks, and Sally, looking up info, it's one of the lowest grossing DreamWorks animated films, at least of its time. It was a flop. Oh, but it made over $300 million. Yeah, but these animated films, they cost a lot of money. Like $120, $130. They all cost a good chunk of change because everything is CG animated. And it's sad the director did Madagascar and all those films, including the third one, made more money than this. Even though this got better reviews than any of those three. And I don't even despise the Madagascar films. I don't. It's just, I do think this film's better. And it's sad that a film that was, again, one of the flops for DreamWorks Animation was actually, I think, one of their better ones. Now, yeah, Will Ferrell, Brad Pitt, Tina Fey, Jonah Hill, David Cross doing a nice job on the voice cast. I'm not even a big Will Ferrell guy, but he did a nice job with this. Because it's a nice take on the Superman story. You know, what if Superman story was in the point of view of Lex Luthor? <laughs> but at the same time, they make the character likable. They make you feel sorry for him. And what if you, a villain who, I say Lex Luthor, but this one, he's not human. He's from an alien race like Brad Pitt's character was. And even the way it opens is like Superman, where the world is dying, they're put into a pod, their parents send him off, and he's ready to go to like the Bruce Wayne type of rich place, but then Brad Pitt's character as a baby hits it, and it ricochets into a prison yard. So from the get-go, this character was born under a bad sign, so to speak. And that... You feel sorry where he, the Brad Pitt character has Superman type of abilities, but Megamind, as he later calls himself, he's very smart. He's pretty much raised in prison, and with these films, you know, there's always the logical, well, how could the guards keep a baby in prison? You either go with it or you don't, and you just see this character ostracized. Goes to school, wants to do good, but anything he does, he's pushed away or made to be a villain even though he didn't really do anything or it was a simple mistake and he keeps getting ostracized to the point of, okay, maybe I should be a villain. And I like the design of Mega Mind. I like his sidekick played by David Cross, a minion who... It's almost as if they tried to do... What was that film back in the day? Was it a robot? No, it's... I forget what it was, where it's like an ape suit, but it's like a fishbowl head. It was a really bad 50 sci-fi movie that I think they were taking a page from. I forget what it was called. But David Cross is the voice of this fish, and this, again, fishbowl, but like the suit looks like an ape type of thing. I thought David Cross and Will Ferrell worked well with each other. Will Ferrell's character, he has a tendency to mispronounce stuff. Instead of school, he says shul. And thankfully they didn't overdo it too much to be annoying. And they put that in there to be an essential plot point for later on in the film. And I thought this is a movie that... The animation was well done. For 2010, I think it holds up pretty well. When the action scenes happen, the city's been destroyed. It's well constructed, the animation. 
I thought that it had a couple of nice twists in the story where it goes to modern time and Tina Fey is a reporter and she's so used to being captured she's not even scared anymore by Megamind. Brad Pitt as Metro Man, that's his character's name. He's looks like Bruce Campbell but adds a little bit of that Elvis attitude. I read up there apparently they were going to get Bruce Campbell, but they thought he wasn't a big enough name, so they got Brad Pitt. In retrospect, they should have just gotten Bruce Campbell. Brad Pitt did fine, but I mean the film didn't do any business anyway, and people are not going to see it just for Brad Pitt. At least not an animated film. And then he's there for a little bit at the beginning, and then he not in it for a good chunk of it, so that, I mean, if you were going to get Bruce Campbell, why not just get him in the first... I think Bruce Campbell would have worked rather well in the role. Yeah, Brad Pitt does fine. I like Brad Pitt. So, at one point, there's a rescue attempt with this death ray, and... I like that the death ray has to be warmed up, where it takes about as long as stuff on my computer does. And then Mega Mind starts noticing something weird where Metro Man can't get out of this easy trap. Oh, my, my, uh, vice, you know, it's copper. Is it, wait, your weakness is copper? What? Even Mega Mind's confused. He doesn't know what's going on. And then it seemed like he killed Metro Man. And he kind of did it by accident. And then, wow, I just did it, it's happy. And this is another thing I like about the film. I like the usage of its songs. I mean, the usage of his songs, I thought, okay, he hit a soft spot. Pretty big soft spot in my heart. Because you have a movie that's got Crazy Train by Ozzy Osbourne. You got Highway to Hell by ACDC. You got Welcome to the Jungle by Guns N' Roses. You got Michael Jackson. I'm bad. I'm bad. You'd know it. I'm like, but damn, this is a good soundtrack showcase in this movie. And I like the way it's used. I mean, like his victory walk is Highway to Hell. And he's walking up and the cops are afraid and... He's a villain, he took control over the city, but the worst he does is like he'll turn people into tubes. They're still alive, but they're tubes. And the other characters, you have Jonah Hill, who is a cameraman for Tina Fey. At one point, Will Ferrell pretty much, he's got everything he wants and he's not happy. Because he doesn't have the fight, doesn't have the ordeal, doesn't have the... Once you have everything, what else do you have? What can you do? He misses the fight, misses the battle. And he, it's like deep down he didn't want Metro Man to die. He's a bad guy, he's still a villain. I think that was one of the issues this film had is that it came out after Despicable Me. And Despicable Me had a villain who was the lead who, because of X, Y, and Z, becomes a good guy, and even his cohort, they're all called minions, so you have another bad guy, but X, Y, and Z becomes a good guy, and his buddy is called Minion, so it makes me wonder what came first, the chicken or the egg? Despicable Me was released first, it was a huge hit, it got th you know, three movies, but Megamind didn't, so... I think that probably hurt his box office, among other stuff. But okay, another movie where another bad guy becomes a good guy. I didn't mind Despicable Me, but this one I enjoyed more. Because this one, I liked the bits in the story. Uh, I, at times it made me chuckle. Like when he's like, you know what, we gotta create a hero. Because what good is a bad guy if he doesn't have a hero to fight? And actually, this weapon hits Jonah Hill... And it's like, okay, I gotta train this guy to be a hero. So he pretends to be his space dad, which is an impersonation of Marlon Brando, who could barely say unfathomable. But 
while at the same time he'll do this thing where he didn't disguise himself as different people and he starts going out with Tina Fey. I, it was kind of nice to see this villain who's not human falling in love and this kind of sweet story about a, a guy who even realizes listen I don't fly off into the sunset I don't get the girl you know people like me aliens like me villains like me that's not how it works I just felt more heartfelt in this compared to Despicable Me. This one, I don't mind that film. This one, I just felt the heart of it more in the way that story was structured. I do think it has some good lines of dialogue. She will never find out. That's the point of lying. <laughs> I would like a bit more of Tina Fey's perspective on her thoughts on Mega Mind. A bit of her, maybe one or two scenes of her, like after she shut Mega Mind down. They do come into play as to like why she falls for Mega Mind, but at least a little bit more of this. If we see, we see through Mega Mind's perspective. Would have been nice to see from Tina Fey her character's perspective as to. Why she falls from bed in my a little bit more of that. Uh, just a little bit more to make that love story a bit more solid in its structure. I don't know how else to put it. And yeah, he tries to turn Jonah Hill into a hero and that goes up shit creek without a paddle. Because... He only wanted to do this to be in love with a girl, and that didn't happen, so then he's like, screw it, I'm going to have the city as my own, and I'm not going to take you to justice, I'm going to pop your head off, like, is it? And makes Megan mind scared. And again, the action scenes are fairly well done. As Jonah Hill's character is going loose. And then, how do I put it? Then you have the twist, spoiler alert, that they find Metro Man's place and they realize he's alive. He's been alive this whole time. Even then, it's a bit screwed up because like the city has been in chaos and Metro Man just sat here and because he wanted to have a break and retire. So he found his chance to fake his own death. Watch, well, I guess this is more of what draws Tina Fey away from him and more towards Megamind. But I wish there was a bit more verbiage from her. Just a, just a little bit more of her character. Showcase even further her fall for Megamind. But yeah, even though the city's being destroyed, Metro Man won't do anything about it. And then Megamind doesn't know what to do, and he's like... Like you see, I'm, I'm the villain. I don't fly off into the sunset. I don't get the girl. He places himself in jail. Like I thought, like there's a one point where, when she dumped him, after she found out who she was, and at one time he asked, "You did you look back?" I thought, unless I missed it, maybe I missed it. But I thought at one point she would later go. By the way, I did look back. Like I did some other bit more of that. As I said, that's one of my only few nitpicks. Like I said, I like the comedy work between Will Ferrell and David Cross. I like the action scenes when they happened. I love the finale with the Welcome to the Jungle. So you're a villain. I'm a super villain. What's the difference? I do it with style. As like this whole, all these machines to look like a bigger version of his face while Welcome to the Jungle is playing and this action scene happens. I just, when you get the right songs, the right soundtrack, it could be easy for me to enjoy. Because people forget how music and sound can be just as important as visuals when it comes to your movie. And I'm actually surprised they used Michael Jackson considering all the, the stuff with him, but they did. 
And yeah, Mega Mind is really a film you don't really hear anybody talk about anymore. But like I said, it, it has a nice heart on its sleeve. Will Ferrell is not as annoying as other films, in my opinion. Maybe because with animation, you have to be controlled a little bit of what you can and can't do. Because, you know, they have to animate the stuff. You had to stick to uh, more of a script. The villain fall in love with the usual dancer in distress. They mean things a little bit different, a little bit off the beaten path. Movie didn't feel long at all. I went by at a brisk pace. It had some clever moments like it in the Marlon Brando type space dad and some of the other stuff. Let's see, J.K. Simmons, he's a voice as the warden. Of course, J.K. Simmons would be in Batman v Superman and, and other various movies, but early, well, not early, but you know, nice to hear J.K. Simmons in there, even though it's briefly. Ben Stiller has a very brief role as a curator and my like, what, Night of the Museum? I think remember hearing at one point Ben Stiller was supposed to be one of the leads but then that didn't end up happening uh, I don't know the details but then he is a producer on the film and then he had a I guess, small voice role in it like I said I like the song selections the animation looks good for 2010 I thought the story had a nice bit of heart to it nice enough little twists and turns to make it a bit interesting. Um, the minion here is not as annoying as the minions in Despicable Me. Maybe they're fine in the first movie, but the more they went on, I mean, they even got their own movie. Like, okay. Ease up a bit. Like, even the script I mentioned, like, he mispronounces. Like, instead of hello, he says, Halo. I mean, hello. No, he said holo. Holo? I mean, hello? When he's supposed to be secretive, that's what gives him away at the end for Jonah Hill to find who he truly is. So, they make that a reason for jokes, but there's actually a plot point with that. I thought that was a decent bit of writing. <clears throat> and he gets his moment to shine, he's able to do it, and helps fix the city, and he becomes who he always wanted to be. And, again, Will Ferrell, I thought, he actually played it off decently well. I'm sure there's other people that could have done this. I mean, <clears throat> whether it be Jack Black or, I don't know, other people. But, again, even though I'm not a big Will Ferrell guy, he pulled it off decently enough. I didn't. Tina Fey was fine. Brad Pitt was fine. Like I said, the whole voice cast was fine. And... You know, for a film that's pretty well put together, it has like a 7.79 to be, doesn't matter, because the film didn't do well, and... I looked, like, Madagascar 3 made twice as much as this, because Madagascar 3 made like 700 to 800 million dollars, while this made like 300 and some million. So, Madagascar 3 made more than double this, so... Go figure. It shows how much a name recognition will go. But people already know that. Be the way, Mega Mind, fun animated film. With that said, thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you guys later. Bye bye.